All right, so I have some information for section 6.9. Um, it's about in intermolecular forces. I sometimes call this the forces that hold together the universe. But it's a pretty short section. It's pretty straightforward. So what we're talking about is intermolecular interactions. So forces that attract two separate molecules together. We're not talking about the bonds within a molecule. Just uh, two different molecules that run into each other. How sticky are they? How well do they stick to each other? And this uh, type of interaction affects the properties that we can see. It's kind of unusual that such a small, tiny thing is a molecule interacting with another one. When taken together in bulk uh, quantity, it affects properties that we associate with material, like boiling point, melting point, solubility, a lot of things that affect us. So here is a chart of the relative strength. Um, I've started reordering it. I used to go from 1 down to 4, but uh, your textbook puts 4 on top, and um, I think that works out pretty well. But maybe I'll start talking about them from the bottom. The weakest forces, so they're stronger as they go up the page, but the weakest forces are nonpolar compounds, and they interact with each other with a force called dispersion forces. Sometimes some textbooks call it London dispersion forces. And what that is, is a temporary dipole. As the electrons are going around the molecule, they might temporarily be on one side. And so that side would be a little bit more negative and the other side would be a little bit more positive. And so if two molecules like that line up and sync together, then the negative end can be attracted to the positive end of another compound. But with nonpolar molecules, it's pretty temporary. Polar compounds have a stronger attraction because that situation is part of the molecule itself. There is a negative end and a positive end to the molecule. And so they can act like little magnets and the negative end of one molecule can be attracted to the positive end of another molecule. And so those dipoles will attract each other like little magnets. An extreme example of this is uh, when a compound is hydrogen bonded. So if a compound has an OH group, an NH group, or a um, FH group, then those dipoles are so strong that um, it's almost, it's, it's classified as another class because they're just really, really strong dipole-dipole interactions. And so they're called a hydrogen bond. But it's the same kind of uh, situation. The hydrogen does not attract electrons very well, so the end of the molecule that has the hydrogen is very positive. And then the end of the molecule that has the oxygen or the nitrogen or the fluorine is very negative. And so we have a dipole that's very uh, enhanced. And then the most uh, extreme case of this is if you have an ionic compound. An ionic compound has a positive piece and a negative piece. So it's a full positive charge on one part and a full negative charge on the other part. It's not just that the electrons are spending more time at one end. And so those attractions between the positively charged piece and the negatively charged piece are really, really strong. And so what does that do? The stronger interactions make it more difficult to boil something or melt something. So they make for a higher boiling point and melting point. That's why I switched um, the chart on the previous page to put number four on top because those are the strongest interactions. They have the highest boiling points and the highest melting points. And that's because the compound is very attracted to itself. So uh, two ionic uh, pieces do not want to leave the, each other. They don't want to move around. They don't want to turn into a liquid and have to move around past each other. They certainly don't want to boil and have to leave and go off into a gas form and leave each other completely. And it takes a lot of energy and a lot of heat to pull those molecules apart. And so that makes a very high boiling point and a very high melting point. Another thing that uh, those strong interactions do is make a compound more soluble in water. We're going to be talking more about solubility and solutions in Chapter 8. But just to let you know, water is in that Category 3, the hydrogen bonded category. So it has very strong interactions itself, and it dissolves other compounds that have those strong interactions. So um, it does not dissolve compounds that are nonpolar and have very weak interactions. So we're going to learn that like dissolves like. So since water is polar, then it dissolves polar and hydrogen bonded and ionic compounds very well. And so I found some examples. I found some molecules that are similar in size. 
because mass does affect melting point and boiling point. So to make the comparison fair, I wanted to find things that were similar in size, and I did. And uh, so we have an ionic compound, sodium chloride, with a very high melting point of 801 degrees Celsius. Uh, in order to liquefy salt, you would have to heat it up that much. And boiling point, I'm surprised I was even able to find it. I didn't know it was possible, but apparently at 1,413 degrees Celsius, you can actually turn salt into a gas. So um, something that's more in the realm of reality, we have a hydrogen bonded compound, isopropanol, that we've been using in lab. And if we wanted to um, the, freeze that, if you wanted to get to the point where the isopropanol was a solid and was melting, then that would happen way below room temperature. It would happen at negative 89 degrees Celsius. That's why by the time it's warm up to room temperature, it's a liquid. And then if we wanted to boil it and make it a gas, it would be 83 degrees Celsius. So a similar situation exists for acetone, that we have a melting point of negative 95 degrees Celsius, again, lower. As we go down the chart, these are getting lower because it's easier to melt things and easier to boil things. It's easier to boil acetone at 56 degrees Celsius. And then finally, the last example, butane, uh, the melting point is very low and even the boiling point is low. So that boiling point is below room temperature. So by the time it's room temperature, butane is already a gas. And then just to mention the water solubility, the, all of these, or three of the compounds are soluble in water, the sodium chloride, isopropanol, and acetone are all soluble in water, but the nonpolar compound butane is not soluble in water. And I think that's about it for chapter, uh, or section nine of chapter six.